Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll walk you through my design process and workflow in Blender and Photoshop to create this fantasy wooden squid house for my world building project. So let's get started. First, to talk a little bit about the project that this takes place in. It's a world that takes inspiration from Nordic and Viking history, but it's not something that is really super fleshed out. But it's more meant as a playground to come up with a lot of interesting and fun designs without having a ton of limitations, but more just to explore. The main theme in this world is that all the inhabitants are worshipping the sea and everything in it. So as much as possible, I want to include motifs from the sea in my designs, uh, which is also why I thought it would be fun to create this house for a family that is built to look like a squid. So the first step for starting any design, uh, for me at least, is to gather a lot of references. And here's a sheet of different types of references that I've used for, for this design. These references are both for inspiring me, uh, but also to get a feel for the direction I want to go in and figuring out uh, which elements do I want to include or which elements do I not want to include. As you can see, there are references of actual architecture, but also just general art that is kind of in a similar vein to what I'm hoping to achieve, uh, as well as some images of squids, just to make sure that I stick to the, that squid shape for the house. And just like a general collection uh, of images that I feel could be valuable to me to refer to uh, as I work. Uh, and I'll mostly, while working, keep these references on the side at all times. So first of all, I want this house to be very warm and inviting and have this very homely feel to it. So I'm also thinking that the family that lives in this house uh, might be very skilled workers, for example, in uh, carving out wood. So it would be interesting to have some areas that has these very intricate wood carving patterns, for example. They might have a little garden where they're selling food that they're growing, as well as selling fish they're catching. So I'll try to keep that in the back of my mind as I go along. So after we're all happy with the selection of references, uh, I want to jump into sketching. And for drawing anything like buildings uh, or man-made that's supposed to be symmetrical, it's really useful to use the symmetry tool in Photoshop, which is what I'm using here and it's gonna make it really easy to experiment with different designs uh, quickly. So obviously the shape of this building is gonna be really tall, uh, kind of like a tower, uh, which means that it's gonna have a lot of separate floors, like all the rooms will be individual floors pretty much. And for the top shape, this kind of triangle bit on the squid, these kind of flaps, uh, to get that shape into the building, I think that would be a cool way to have balconies on the top, that it's kind of these big openings that you can maybe fold in and out. For the tentacles, I'm not sure yet exactly how to get that into the building to make sense. And also not exactly sure how many of them to include. So that's something that I will need to experiment with. This is the type of sketch that I wouldn't really show to anyone, but it's more for myself to uh, make sense of my initial ideas in my head and just get started putting some marks down on the paper. And actually now I'll already jump into 3D, into Blender to do a very simple block out of the shape, which is gonna enable me to just explore the shape a little bit easier. Uh, so I'm just using basic shapes inside of Blender, just transforming them, stretching them, just to get the general shape of the house down. Uh, and then I'll take a screenshot from Blender and draw over that in Photoshop. And the 3D means that I don't have to worry about perspective or proportions or keeping it uh, consistent through the sketches, but I only need to worry about the design. Uh, and in that way, it's easier to, to compare the designs next to each other. I'm keeping it very loose and sketchy in, in this stage, just trying not to commit too much to anything, but keep my options open a little bit until I feel that I hit that sketch that just that feels right to me. Since the house is this kind of unusual tall tower shape, I want to make sure that the inside of the house is also going to make sense with the layout of the floors as well as the sizes of the rooms to make sure that there's actually enough space for someone to comfortable to comfortably to to, comf to, to, comfortably, to comfortably live there. So I'm sketching out where I imagine these rooms to be. Like obviously they would need uh, somewhere to sleep, they would need somewhere to, uh, to cook food, and they would need some sort of a living space. I like to keep this process between Photoshop and Blender very fluid. Do a little bit of exploration in Photoshop, jump back into to Blender to explore the space a bit more, go back into Photoshop. And each way of working has different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and for me at least, in the beginning stages of designing, uh, it's really useful to kind of use the strengths of both and just like go back and forth. Uh, so now we're back in Blender and I'm fleshing out the 3D a little bit more uh, and I'm using Curve to create uh, a basic shape for the tentacles. I always try to import a scale reference in 3D. So in this case, a 3D mesh of a person uh, and I'll put that person around the scene just to make sure that everything I'm doing is matching up with the scale of an, of an average person. So now I'm setting up a camera inside of Blender. Uh, which I'll be using uh, as a base 
to draw over, also for my final line art. And again, it's just super useful not to have to worry about the perspective and mapping out everything yourself, uh, keeping the proportions and scale correct, but you get all that for free from the 3D. Uh, and you can focus more on the actual design and you can focus more on making your line art look good. So I'm pretty happy with this overall camera view and layout of the space, uh, as well as the silhouette and shape of the structure. So I want to try to do the rest of the design from this angle. So I'm thinking the spaces between the tentacles could be different areas. So for example, there would be an area where someone is doing uh, woodworking. There would be an area where there's this little garden and there would be an area where they're selling all the stuff that they're producing. And for the structure itself, I'm imagining that it's mostly made out of wood. But to make it more interesting, it would be really cool to have it covered with these kind of pieces of cloth or drapings that are stretched out over the surface. So I'm trying to think of how that could look and what kind of shapes and designs that they could have. So I'm going to do a bunch of copies of the sketch and just try to explore different shape designs of these pieces of cloth. I quite like how this one is turning out and that'll be the one that I'm going to be moving forward with as well. For everything else than the main structure, I'm not that worried about it at the moment. I don't want to necessarily have everything completely designed before moving forward uh, because sometimes you also see more things and get new ideas as you go along so I don't want to limit myself too much but just kind of keep the process moving. So again I'm using curves in Blender to create these finer shapes of the tentacles and I'm not necessarily going to stick to this in Photoshop but just using it as a general shape guide and just to make sure that the perspective is not completely off. Here I'm just duplicating a lot of stretched out cylinders across the scene, which is going to really help me with the vertical perspective. So now I'm moving into proper line art. And the main thing I'm focusing on here is line quality. So the more precise that the underlying drawing is, the better, as it means that I only have to focus on the line quality. So this is a pretty straightforward part of the process for the most part, and you can zone out a little bit. For all these outside areas, I want them to consist mostly of actual items and objects that uh, already exist or existed uh, at that time in, in the Viking Age or in the medieval age. So to kind of populate the scene with these kind of props, I'll actually use the Sketchfab add-on inside of Blender, which is a free add-on that you can download. And it enables you to search for 3D objects and you usually get a pretty decent selection of uh, high quality 3D assets that you can import straight into Blender. So I'm finding a lot of different objects using this uh, to, to spread throughout the scene. So anything from tables to barrels to even fish, I'm able to find a lot of these. And having these objects in your scene doesn't mean that you need to stick to them 100%. You can use them just as a general base, even just for perspective or just to get a feeling of how the space is looking with these objects and if it's something you want to go in that direction or not. So it, it's really useful even just to experiment with so you don't have to uh, draw all these things first to find out if something works or not. And again, I'm making sure that everything is more or less to scale, that I don't suddenly have a table that's uh, twice the height of a human being. Usually I actually work in a more realistic style, but for this project I thought it would be fun to focus a bit more on the design and line art. So as I mentioned earlier, I want to have these very intricate wood carvings on some areas. And I think having them along the side of the tentacles would be a really cool uh, place to fill out some empty space. So here I'm looking at a lot of Nordic uh, wood carvings and just trying to replicate that overall same feeling. And at the same time, I want to include some of these uh, sea related motifs. So I'm trying to figure out how to include uh, waves, for example, or a ship or some fish in the design. So that takes a little bit of experimentation. After I've sketched in the first design of this, because it's almost drawn on the side view, it's actually easy to grab that and just transform it to fit more or less on the other tentacles with a little bit of warping and adjustment. And then I'll go over that a little bit to fix the lines that don't match. So now the first pass of the line art is getting to a decent place and one of the last things that I wanted to add in uh, is some characters to show a little bit more life around the place and to show the context of this daily life of the family that lives there. Since I imagine that this house 
has been used by generations and generations of this family. It would be nice to kind of show that in the characters that's in the scene as well. So I'm adding the grandma sitting on the porch, looking over all the activities. Uh, so some characters that are talking or trading uh, produce, uh, some kids running around, uh, someone woodworking, uh, and, and someone that's coming to have a look at the shop. So the next part is to jump into coloring. And the way I like to go about coloring is to split it up into parts. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to go over every single object and just color it in with uh, any color, just basically to create a mask. So later on I will be able to focus on just painting on these individual objects and not having to worry about the color spilling into other areas. So I'm not worrying about uh, creating accurate colors at all right now, uh, just to fill in the shapes. This is very relaxing uh, part of the process uh, where you can zone out a little bit, uh, have some videos on the side, and it can be really nice after having dealt with all this design work and focusing so much on line work and line quality. So some objects are going to be drawn purple and yellow and blue and it doesn't really matter. It's, it's mostly important that you just paint it so, so everything is clearly separated and so you can clearly see if any colors are overlapping. So after everything has been colored in and all the shapes are masked, I can start going object by object and try to approximate the actual color that I'm looking for without going too detailed yet. So I wanted the whole structure to have this warm inviting feeling, which would mean to use warmer colors, which is why wood is really good, because it has all these red orangey tones to it, which I want to try to complement throughout the rest of the design. I do want all these pieces of cloth wrapping around the structure to stand out as a different material, so I'll make those a bit lighter, so we also have some good value contrast in the design. I don't want anything that's super saturated and very colorful that's going to stand out, but I want everything to be consistent with each other. I'm using a few different brushes just to indicate some texture, as I don't want everything to be too clean. And any brush with some texture on it uh, will do, uh, just to get a little bit of, of variation in there. And at this point, I also want to start putting in shadows in the scene, which is uh, part of the style that I've chosen for this project, uh, that all the shadows are completely black, which adds this very graphical and stylized look to it. Uh, so the way that I'm doing this, and the, also the reason that 3D is so helpful, is that uh, since I already have the basic structure uh, in 3D, I can go in and set up a light and actually get uh, realistic shadows, which I'll then render out as a shadow pass from Blender. Um, so I can put that inside of Photoshop and then get a really good base for my shadows uh, that I can work on top of. And these shadows are not going to be completely accurate because my painting is not matching one-to-one -one with the 3D. So it's going to need a lot of adjustment, but I don't have to worry about the shadows falling in the right places because that's calculated in the 3D for free. Uh, so I'm taking this shadow pass and putting on top of my scene in Photoshop. And as you can see, it all really looks kind of interesting and very stylized, but it needs a lot of work to fit exactly to my painting. So now it's just a matter of erasing the parts of the shadows that I don't like and painting in other areas that need a little bit more shadow. For example, all the more detailed areas are not going to have very accurate shadows, so I'll have to put them in manually. So this part can also take a while, but compared to having to map out all the shadows yourself and calculating where they're going to fall and which objects are casting the shadows where, this is saving me a ton of time. The trick with having these completely dark shadows is that there's also going to be areas that are going to get covered in shadows that you don't want covered with shadows. And there you're going to have to go in and cheat a little bit and make those areas not affected by the shadows. For example, the entrance of the house is completely covered by shadows. So here you need to go in and remove the shadows from that area uh, to make it readable. So now I'm happy with the, the overall color harmony of the scene. Uh, I'll start going in and detail everything a little bit more, focusing a bit more on these textures and making the materials read a bit more interesting. And there's, there's no set plan for going about this. I'll just work on areas that I feel stand out to me that they need more work and I'll just work my way around the image and work the whole scene up as a whole and trying to not to tunnel vision too much on specific details. So when painting in the colors and the textures I'm trying not to go too contrasty but just doing small variations in the value and the color to give a hint of some details and some uh, material definition uh, but I want to keep the overall graphic and simple look of the scene. 
uh, and let the line art kind of stand out as well. So I don't want to paint anything that's, that looks too realistic. I'm giving this character some red clothing to make him stand out because it can also get too even if everything is his very similar uh, brownish colors. Uh, so it's good to have some places for the eye to, to go uh, where there's a bit more contrast in the color or in the value. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to overdo it as it's going to make the whole scene too busy, especially when there's already a lot of details around the scene. To get the details in the ground, uh, I actually go to textures.com and grab a few images of dirt and grass. Uh, and I'll bring them into Photoshop and use the surface blur filter on it. And this simplifies the image uh, really nicely, uh, but keeps some areas that are still a bit sharp. So it looks a little bit painterly. And I can get some of these nice realistic uh, color and, and values, with, uh, but still keep the graphic look. And to not have it look too realistic either, I'll just mask in specific areas and also paint over it a little bit. To give the image a little bit more depth, one of the last things I want to do is to add a few more uh, silhouettes of buildings behind it, just to give the sense that this is a house that's part of a, of a bigger town uh, and there might be similar structures uh, around it. Uh, so I'll do that in 3D again. I'll just copy the main structures of the house and scatter them a bit behind the scene while I look through the camera view to make sure that the composition uh, looks good. Uh, then I'll use those shapes as masks in Photoshop and fill them in with a little bit of color which is just gonna give that tiny little extra detail to the scene. Then I'm adding in a little bit of smoke to the top, just to indicate that there's some activity going on inside the house. And very lastly, I'll just go over all of the line art and pick some places to emphasize and draw over a little bit stronger, uh, which just gives a nice variation in the line and, and can help guide the eye around the image. And that's pretty much it for this exterior view of the house. If you want, you can put it on a nice sheet with some extra drawings, detailing out some specific design elements you want to show off. Uh, but that's really up to you. And for the next tutorial, I'll go through the interior view of this house and go through how I create a detailed view of the inside. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out. And don't forget to hit the like button if you like the video and subscribe for more content in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.